Give me just the facts. I don't want your opinion, I just want the facts. I can come up with my own opinions. That statement rests on a great misconception about the very nature of truth. It rests on two assumptions that I'm about to debunk today. The first assumption is that just because someone presents you with all of the facts, that must mean they're not trying to manipulate you if all their facts are correct. The second assumption is that anything that is not an absolute fact is entirely subjective. That is, it's entirely a matter of personal opinion. Well, let me start with the first assumption. Someone can present you with an argument that has a lot of facts, and all of those facts can be correct, and they can still be trying to manipulate you. They could still be leading you to a great falsehood. If you want two really big examples of that, watch Michael Moore's Fahrenheit 9-11, or watch Janice D'Souza's Obama's America 2016. In both cases, these filmmakers have a lot of facts, and they are mostly correct, but the facts are cherry-picked and presented in very misleading ways. Now, let me give you a very specific example of a misleading fact. Very close to the re-election in 2012, um, right around October, I was filling up my gas tank, and as I walked into the gas station, someone put a little card on my windshield. The card went something like this. It stated that when Bush was president in 2008, gas prices were about 140 some odd amount a gallon. I guess we'll say 142. Now that Obama's president, gas prices are like 280 a gallon. Think about that when you vote in 2012. Well, first, is that a fact? Yes, it is a fact. At the end of the Bush era, gas prices were very low. By 2012, gas prices had gone back up quite a bit, but you notice how I said they went back up? You see, what that card didn't tell you was that in 2005-2006, gas prices were actually a lot higher. They were above $4 a gallon. Do you remember that? Well, the person who put that card on my windshield was hoping that I wouldn't remember that, but I know better because I have basic critical thinking skills. So whenever someone presents you with a fact, or a series of facts, ask yourself this. First, of course, are the facts correct? But if they are correct, that's not the end of the story. Then you need to ask, do they have an agenda? Well, they probably do. But what is their agenda for presenting those facts? And what are some other facts that they maybe didn't consider, or perhaps even didn't want you to consider? Now, as a college professor, I have enough integrity to, number one, present my students with accurate facts, but more importantly than that, I try to consider every possible angle. With that said, I'm also human, so there's always a chance that some of my own personal beliefs, personal feelings are going to seep into what I'm doing, and I may not consider certain facts. If you're one of my students, this is an open invitation. You are welcome to present facts that I didn't consider. You really are. Just make sure you know what you're talking about but you are most certainly welcome to present facts I didn't consider. I encourage that. I'm more interested in my students learning than I am in me being right at that particular moment. Now let me move on to the other misconception. The other misconception is that anything that is not an absolute fact, that is not proven beyond a shadow of a doubt, is entirely subjective. In 2006, I was in London, and I met people from all over the world, including people from China. Most of the students from China I met were card-carrying members of the Chinese Communist Party. Most of them joined the Communist Party because they wanted a scholarship so they could go to London and get a degree, and possibly never return to China. But I did meet one particular young Chinese Communist who was passionate about Chinese Communism. As he and I began discussing this, he kind of laid some ground rules. He said, I don't think we should criticize other people's cultures and the way other people do things, but we should try to understand each other. Um, to an extent, I agree with that, but I do believe that everyone is subject to a certain level of critical thinking, to a certain level of scrutiny. Well, he told me that as a communist, he believes that we should try to reduce and ultimately eliminate stratification. 
By stratification, he's referring to the socioeconomic scale. His goal is to eliminate income and wealth inequality and to make us all equal in all things material. Well, I didn't criticize him for being Chinese, certainly. And I like a lot of things about the Chinese, especially the philosopher Confucius. I didn't criticize his culture, I didn't criticize his country, I didn't even criticize his ideology, though that would be fair game. But instead of criticizing the communist ideology itself, I actually pointed to the actions of the Communist Party. I asked him, if your goal is to create income equality and wealth equality, why is it that there seems to be greater inequality in China than in the U.S. today? Why is it that the policies of the Chinese Communist Party, Party um, keep workers stuck in these factories working really long hours for very low wages? And when they try to unionize, that is, they try to collectively bargain for less inequality, the Chinese Communist Party puts them down. Well, he didn't have an answer for those questions. Was I being intolerant by asking him those questions? Was I not respecting his beliefs? Well, I was respecting his beliefs, at least to an extent. But... I was simply questioning, uh, in this case, the genuineness of the Chinese Communist Party's professed principles. It would also be fair for me to question communism itself. But my point is, when you question someone's personal opinion, if you want to call it that, you can do so without attacking them personally, and it doesn't have to be taken personally. So, in conclusion, just because the facts are straight doesn't mean you're getting the truth. And what we call subjective in reality is often just questions that we have not examined closely enough yet or certain phenomena that we have not quite fully explained. While you're entitled to your opinion, your opinion is subject to scrutiny. And in the end, all things are ultimately objective. They just have to be examined, and we have to stay critical, stay objective, until we find the truth in a matter. And truth needs to be the ultimate goal.